the word of God, let us begin by singing Psalm number 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his, we are his and we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. And the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we, uh, Almighty God, kindly we beseech thee in every heart the true love of peace, and guide with thy wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility thy dominion may increase, till the earth is filled with the knowledge of thy love, through Jesus Christ our Lord who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 1 through 18. 2 Kings chapter 17 verses 1 through 18 2 Kings chapter 17 Verses 1 through 18. In the twelfth year of Azariah, king of Judah, uh, Hoshea, son of Elah, uh, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned nine years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord but not like the kings of Israel who preceded him. Uh, Shall minister king of Assyria came up to attack Hosha who had been Shall minister's vessel and had paid him tribute but the king of vassal, but the 
uh, and paid him tribute. But the king of Assyria discovered that Hosha was a traitor, for he had sent envoys to um, envoys to so uh, king of Egypt, and he no longer paid tribute to the king of Assyria. And he had done year by as he had done year by year. Therefore, uh, Shalm Minister seized him and put him in prison. The king of Assyria invaded the entire land, marched against Samaria, and laid siege to it for three years. In the ninth year of Hosha. The king of Assyria captured Samaria and deported the Israelites to Assyria. He settled them in uh, Halea and Guzan on the Habor River and in the towns of the Medes. All this took place because the Israelites had sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them up out of Egypt from under the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. They worshipped other gods and followed the practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before them, as well as the practices that the kings of Israel had introduced. The Israelites secretly did things against the Lord their God that were not right from watchtower to for fortified city. They built themselves high places in all their towns. They set up sacred stones and asherah poles on every high hill and under every uh, spreading tree. At every high place, they burned incense as the nations whom the Lord had driven out before them had done. They did wicked things that aroused the Lord's anger. They worshiped idols. They uh, idols through the Lord. Uh, though the Lord had said, You shall not do this, the Lord warned Israel and Judah, though uh, through all his prophets and seers, Turn from your evil ways, observe my commands and decrees in accordance with the entire law that I commanded your ancestors to obey and that I uh, delivered to you through my servants, the prophets. But they would not listen and were as stiff-necked as their ancestors who did not trust in the Lord their God. They rejected his decrees and the covenant he made with their ancestors and the statutes he had warned them to keep. They followed uh, worthless idols and themselves became worthless. They imitated the nations around them, although the Lord had ordered them, do not do as they do. They forsook all the commandments of the Lord their God and made for themselves two idols cast in the shape of calves and an asher pole. They bowed down to all the starry hosts and they worshipped Baal. Uh, they sacrificed their sons and daughters in the fire. They practiced divination and sought omens and sold themselves to evil in the eyes of the Lord, arousing his anger. So the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them from his presence. Only the tribe of Judah was left.
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Acts chapter 9, verses 36 through 43. Acts chapter 9, verses 36 through 43. In Joppa there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek her name is uh, Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time she became sick and died and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydia was near Joppa so when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydia, they sent two men to him and urged him, Please come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the uh, widows stood around him crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. um, According to St. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. St. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of uh, Gennesaret, The people were uh, crowded around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, uh, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had uh, finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon Simon answered, Master, uh, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything but because you say so, I will let down the nets. Uh, When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. 
So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me. Uh, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid, from now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up to shore, left everything, and followed him. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, you know, what we see here is that, you know, the Old Testament describes situations where um, there's a lot of wickedness, you know, even, even among people that were, you know, known by, by, um, you know, known by the Lord's holy name I mean they were they were often you know very wicked and and turned away from God and a lot of people had their own idols and and you know they just they they didn't they often sometimes didn't really respect God for who God is and and you know worship him and but what we see here you know we see a situation that's much different here in the new testament you know we see a situation where where um you know there are people that that um had been devout and um you know like people that that did good works and been devout that um, you know were, were brought to life just by the word and um, what we see here too is that you know with these fish we, we see a situation where there were just so many people that were crowded around Jesus. And, you know, he, he, he needed to get in the boat to sort of get away from the people uh, enough to be able to teach them and, and not be crowded by them. And, um, and then he, you know, had the nets cast and uh, and they were cast and and so many fish were brought in that there wasn't I mean almost enough room for the for them in in, in more than one boat and the boats began to sink. So this is where we see a situation where you know when when Christ who is God in the flesh guides and directs us and um, shows us how to proceed that uh, we can have if it be his will an overabundance you know more than enough you know that that this is this is the the grace that we receive that we receive an overabundance you know, that we receive, um, we receive a phenomenal amount. And these graces that we receive from Christ, you know, are a result of the fact that he has God in the flesh. The result of the fact of, of his sacrifice to reconcile us to God through him and through what he did on the cross. You know, 
God created everything on heaven and earth. And really all that he can give to us because, you know, he made it for us. And, uh, and we are made for him. So it's one of those deals where when we look at these things, you know, there's no reason to believe that we're ever poor in a sense because God made everything and, you know, he made everything for us and we're made for him. And, um, you know, it is good that we can worship God and that we can love God and that, you know, it's even better that he loves us, maybe, because, you know, we're fallible creatures, but he's un infallible. And that seems to imply that his love is infallible. I mean... There's almost no other way to explain it or even think about it. You know, there are times in my life where it's very difficult to proceed. It's a very challenging thing. You know, we, we look forward to, to doing things like, you know, going to work, you know, we look forward to to um, every new day, to being around other people that, you know, we care about. You know, we look forward to, to many things in life, uh, which, which we should, you know, look forward to things. But we need to look forward to the right things. And we need to see the good in people, if we can. You know, it, one of the things I was just saying today is that in your larger cities there, the reason why people have, you know, so much, so much good things in the larger cities is that basically everybody's best qualities, you know, the, the good that they offer to the world, in the to the world, it's like it's all added together, you know. And and um, when it is, you just have this really great thing. And um, you know, it's maybe not always like that in some places, but but that's how it should be, you know. That all the good is added together, and then you know, collectively, the product of that is this really great thing. And that's what we need to have. You know, we need to have a really great thing. You know, because like, when we're added into Christ, and we're a living member of the body of Christ, you know, we all have different parts to play. But in total, the good that we offer it's all added together and collectively it's a really good thing you know God is, is all good all loving he is love and you know there's really no parts to God as it were but um, but that's where if there were you know, there's many members in the body of Christ, and, and Christ is God in the flesh. So, you know, when we when we think about these things, it's important to note that you know we we need to we need to we need to be in God's love, you know, and, and receive his grace. Uh, we don't want to be like the ancient Israelites that in various times it's written that they basically rejected God 
we don't want to be like that. That's not right. You know, we want to be always, always in God's love. Sometimes that's hard to do. Anyway, that's basically the message there. Yeah, it's one of those deals where sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to live in this world. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all the seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten up made of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He ascended in heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered in their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, the light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our needs and for those of others. Father God, I pray that my mother is able to have, uh, it, that her mind is able to be healed, that you heal her of all of her afflictions, uh, guide and direct her in all manner of righteousness and salvation. You know, I pray that things go well for my, uh, you know, for me being married. I uh, pray that uh, you would greatly, uh, uh, you know, forgive us, bless us, provide for us. Uh, I pray that uh, things go well as, as well for, uh, for many that watch this. You know, uh, I pray that... Um, things go well for not only my mother but uh, you know all those that uh, she's related to even that she might she might come into contact again soon with her relatives and uh, be able to live in peace and love with them once more I pray that you would uh, bless us, provide for us all, that you would strengthen my opportunities, uh, cause me to increase and grow in all good things. Uh, pray that you deliver me from all evil. I pray all this in your son's name, Jesus Christ, amen. O oh, Almighty God, kindle we beseech thee in every heart the true love of peace and guide with thy wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth 
that in tranquility thy dominion may increase till the earth is filled with the knowledge of thy love. Through Jesus Christ, the Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all the, the goodness and strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Ghost, your sins are resolved you. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and joyful it is right and a good and joyful thing always in our work to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Therefore we praise you, join our voice with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven. Who forever, say, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you have made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this, remember to me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood and new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink, of new and unending life in him sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity and constancy and peace the last day bring with us all your saints in the joy of your eternal kingdom all this we ask for your son jesus christ by him and with him in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever amen amen and now as our Savior Christ has taught us, has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, that will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
how yet Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us therefore let us keep the feast hallelujah Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world grant us peace the gifts of God for the people of God the body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep your everlasting life Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Body of Christ. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us alive. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Body of Christ. Let us continue by singing Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his compassion is over all his works. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. That make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that the peoples may know of your power and the glory and splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his works, in all his words, and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord, the Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up all those who are bowed down. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sinless of heart. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and knowledge and love of God, and with Son Jesus Christ, blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you, may with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Go in peace, love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs>